Port of Sandpoint. It's a it's a bustling little place. Uh, there's a lot of fishing going on. Um, what you know about Sandpoint since you've been ruler of River Port is uh, you know this is a place that you don't ever ship any drugs to. Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost kind of like a, uh, men came here, they built it, uh, trying to settle this part of the wilderness. Um, some of your studies, uh, being in Rotoport with the, uh, arch into Rotoport, but you know, that's a Thessalonian ruin. Uh, you do know the tower called the Old Light is one of the Thessalonian ruins within Rotoport, uh, within, Sandpoint. Uh, or yes, within Parisia. Oh. That is known, and uh, it usually is the beacon for people coming towards Sandpoint. Um, as you approach, um, you pull up to a dock. You notice a lot of people around stop what they're doing, and they look at you. Um, like you said, you're a fancy guy. You start putting on all this stuff. Your crown shines. It's uh, early morning, so the sun's just shining off of you. You're almost like a beacon yep. as you pull up. That's what I like. Um, she asked you, uh, how long are you going to be here? Four days here. I mean, you plan on pulling out today, tomorrow? Um, I'll tell her that I'm, uh, I mean, even if I get my stuff done today, I'll, I'll tell her three days. Three days. Yeah. All right, she'll tell you, um, if you're looking for me or the boys, you can find us at, uh, the Pixie's Kitten. You can find us at the Rusty Dragon. Or you can find us at Crack Tooth Tavern. Okay. Um, is there, like, one inn here in the town? Uh, no, there's kind of two. You got the Rusty Dragon, which is an inn, um... Which one's nice? Is there a nicer in? She tells you you're probably looking for the white deer. Okay, that's a that's a nice in. Nice that's fancy place in town. I'll tell her <clears throat> if her and her men want, I'll acquire rooms for them at the white deer. She laughs. She's like, they're not into that. No. Okay. Well, the Rusty Dragon is not a bad place. It's yeah. it's a well known establishment, but for you. Upper class types, the white deer is okay. what I was just, looking for. I was just offering. Um, so, uh, her and her men, they kind of drop off somewhere. They've got a couple of things they're going to load here. Um, where are you heading to first since you're here at Sandpoint? I mean, if it's time to eat, I'm going to go. It's all you, man. I'm going to, uh, Probably head to the white deer and get some food. That that might be best. You're probably tired of fish, yeah. bread, cheese. You know I mean, it's it's a it's, it's a bit of a fisherman's life right there. Hell. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't mind that, food. but I mean, but if you want some fancy cuisine, that's where you go. Is the white deer? Um, A pair of wooden life-size deer carved with painstaking care from white birch stand astride. Uh, the entrance to this sizable tavern and inn, which commands an impressive view of the Verissian Gulf to the north. Um, you walk in and this, uh, this shanty man, uh, you've actually, he kind of reminds you of the people of the Wandering Stone that you had once met, but he is very well groomed, well kept. Um, as you walk up to the place, he gives you a very odd look because here you are dressed in all this regal and then you're a half orc mm -hmm. and your face is burned yeah I mean and, shit happens man I mean you're right shit does happen but not to this guy and um he says um how may I help you he doesn't bother to open the door or anything well, I'm here for a uh, room and some lunch. Um, he tells you, um, maybe a uh, crack tooth tavern, the rusty dragon, maybe. Um, I'll, uh, I'll laugh and I'll pull out a few gold coins and say, I'm good for it. And I'll pat my purse. Well, he's like, um, <laughs> open the door. Welcome, Mr. Uh, Warnock. Warnock. And he 
he says, um, well, my apologies, he offers you in. Um, this place is really nice. It's uh, three stories. The uh, first floor in this is something you're not used to in a tavern. It's made of solid stone. Oh, yeah? No, it's wood. Yeah. Um, let's see. Mm. <laughs> uh, basically, anything you can think of, nice, you can find here. The type of cuisine you're used to in a report probably doesn't compare to what you're about to have. Um, get you a nice dinner. Your waitresses and whatnot are very uh, odd of you as well. Mm -hmm. And you come to realize that it's the face. Yeah. So, um, not used to what used to in order to pour. Yeah, they kind of pay it no mind anymore. That's right, yeah. Because they're, they're, they're used to it. Mm -hmm. Um, get you some grub. Yeah. Um, Mr. Uh, Viscali, he asks you, uh, will you be staying here, Mr. Ornock? That's that's my plan. So um, I, I hear this is the nicest place in town, and I would... He says, um, it's well learned. He opens his book. Um, how do you spell that? Uh, I tell him O-R-O-N-O-K. Okay. okay. Tornhart. He kind of scoffs at your name. He writes it down. And, um, and how many nights do you plan on staying? Give me uh, tonight and the next night. Okay, tonight and the next night. He tells you um, ten gold pieces will cover your stay and your three meals for the day here. You find that very low priced for this place. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of shocking. I mean, even though you don't pay that much at literally anywhere in Riddleport that you'd be used to going to, it's kind of shocking to yeah. you. I mean, he tells you uh, what your room number is, which is kind of irrelevant. Yeah, right. Uh, let's just say it is room 11. Perfect. That means I'm double number one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and can he ask you, uh, he's just making small talk of what's your business in the small town of Sandpoint? Uh, I tell him, I let's see, what's this fellow's name? Illisari is the guy I'm talking to. Yes, talk that's to. who you're wanting to talk to. I tell him that I'm just, um, I'm actually very interested in speaking with uh, Illisari over at the Academy. Ah, uh, he tells you, um, did you arrive by boat? I did. By, tells you, um, you've walked right past that place on your way here. It's a large stone structure. Three stories right by the port. You can't miss it. And then you realize, yeah, he's right. It is literally the biggest building on your way here. Well, I tell him I appreciate it. Uh, uh after uh, I get done eating, after <laughs> I, I may go uh, pay a visit to him. Hmm. Tells you uh, I, I'm, I'm, very, I'm not I'm not talking mean. Like I hmm. I if I'm ever speaking to anybody, I always try to come off as friendly as I can. Elegant. Yeah, elegant. You know what I mean. So you you try to come off well mannered. I try to I, I I try to overcome the half work. So you're like thing. Oh, that's not a big deal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, thank you, good sir. Yes. Um, may I have some caviar? Okay, I got it. Um, so you travel down the street to the academy. Um, uh, he even asked you, I should say, before you leave, uh, are you planning on adopting? Um, I tell him I don't, and I will ask him to elaborate on that. Uh, you're not aware that the place is an orphanage and a school for the children here? No. Hmm. I, I did not know that. Interesting. It's like, uh, well, um, we bid you good day, and we'll be seeing you this evening for dinner. Mm -hmm. You sure will. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, well, thank you. He walks you out, opens the door for you. I like this place. You should. It's, I, I, I like it. it's almost like the gambling areas and upper. It's it's like the Abyssal Angel. Yeah, but nicer. Yeah. Oh man, it's pretty fancy. Yeah, I like I like the Abyssal Angel quite a bit too. Oh, yeah, this is this place is all like white, gold, like a royal blue, silver. It's nice. really nice. Um, so uh, you come up to um, Thorndark Academy. Uh, it's 
quiet place. Um, you are noticing that you're getting a lot of eyes as you're walking around. I, I, I'm, I get it. Like, I, I understand why I am. Yeah, you, you should. And, I mean, you stand out here very, very well. Um, before you make the door, you're approached by a woman and a grizzled man, maybe in his mid thirties. This is before I get to the academy. Yeah, as you get walk, just pretty much in the street. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the woman, she's uh, she's dressed well. I mean, nowhere near what you are. The uh, man's obviously armor. He's got a sword on his hip, and um, she says, uh, "Greetings, Dark Judge Dornark." Um, we were not expecting someone of your renown here in our town of Riddleport. I am Mayor Kendra Darabin. She's like, um, it is a pleasure to meet you. She sticks out her hand. I, I'll shake it. Um, she's like, uh, this is our sheriff. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Bellor Hemlock. Um, may we ask, why are you in our town of Sandpoint? I'll, um, extend my hand to Hemlock and, um, I'll say, um, I didn't send word ahead of time or anything like that. I didn't want to make a big scene or anything. Him like Kutcher was like, no trouble. Uh, no, no trouble at all. I just wish to speak with, uh, Elisari. Um, the mayor is like, um, plan on adopting a child? Uh, no, actually, I just recently found out that that was an orphanage. Uh, I, I hear that he collects this and that and the builder's like so you're here to acquire some of these strange things he collects I would like to see some of the things he collects I, I'm a bit of a collector myself and I am honestly I any kind of knowledge that I can gain that's just something I really try to acquire as much knowledge as I can you're so. lying huh no, in a sense you're lying I'm not I mean what are you coming here to talk about though his necklace okay so I'm just trying to gauge with you thinking that you need to roll a deception uh, I, here or not. I, I can, I guess. Um, I mean, you're you're covering the truth with little lies, which technically aren't lies of this place. Right. Um, I just, I don't know, I just want to pick his brain about... No, I get what you're getting. I'm just saying, saying you think you need a deception here because this is the mayor, this is the sheriff. I'll roll. Uh, 25. Um, both of them seem like they believe you. Um, and she's like, um, is there any way we can accommodate you for your stay here? Uh, no, no, thank you. I, I already have a room over at the, uh, White Deer. Oh, she's like, uh, we'd expect no less from a person who runs a town such as yourself. Um, you can tell there's a bit of sarcasm in her tone. Yeah. So, um, do you acquire any protection? The uh, Bill or Hemlock asks you as he's looking around. It's not one um, such as yourself in the streets of Riddleport to walk alone, I would assume. Uh, no, not in Riddleport. I like, say this place though it seems very very nice. Well, uh, he packs his blade and tells you, uh, "Here you should have no worries." That's um, that's why I expected coming here. I didn't expect. I don't expect any trouble. I don't. No trouble coming from me at all. Um, I mean, he's just kind of giving you the eye when you say that. It's very you, you. You can tell just by walking up and down one row, literally, that this place is completely backwards of standpoint. Yeah. I mean, we're going to port, yeah. Excuse me. So, I mean, and, and you can tell he's automatically thinking that you're trouble. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, by now, two years of word of what's happened to Cromarkey there. Yeah. You've been involved. I was as, involved in overtaking a town. Yeah. So, I mean, and now here you are in this place. I mean, even though you've noticed there's a small wall around the place, there's not a lot of guards. Mm -hmm. So, maybe they're thinking, hey... Maybe uh, he's here to take over Sandpoint as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. I'd like to take over everything in the entire world, but yeah. that's that's not the goal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, at the moment. Yeah, that's not your goal at the moment. Um, well, um, she'll tell you if you need anything personally, please come see me. Uh, I thank her. So, uh, how long do you plan on staying? Um, 
I booked tonight and tomorrow night at the inn. I plan on, I told uh, Lady Red that uh, I'll be trying to, to leave Doc in three days. Uh, she looks at you and you say, like, you're in, like she doesn't know. Oh, well, my, my, my boat. Okay. The captain. My captain's home. And, uh, well, um, like I said, if you need anything, please let us know. And uh, we'll leave you to Mr. Um, Ilosi here. I appreciate it. So, um, you're here at the academy. Uh, knock on the door. Yeah. Big wooden door. Well, I actually, do I, do I, do I see it as something I need to knock on? Uh, there's big pouring. Okay. I, I didn't know because, uh, I didn't know if I looked at it as like a library or something like that. It's, uh, well, he told you it was a school. Okay. Yeah, for the yeah, orphans yeah, yeah, and the yeah. children here in town. Yeah, you're right. Okay. It's that type of academy. Yeah, I'll knock, I'll knock. I mean, get the big pouring, uh, there's no answer. Okay. Um, I'll kind of put my ear up to the door, see if I can hear anything. Do I need to roll? Yeah, go ahead and roll me a perception. Okay. Not good. 11. Mm. Probably don't hear anything. No, you don't hear much of nothing. Um, I'll give it one more. Oh, so you're using fish this time? Boom, boom, boom. Uh, yeah, I'll kind of give it a, another knock. Or a bang, I guess. Um... Oh, sorry. Uh, opens the door. He's probably in his forties. He's uh, got some stubble on his chin. Yeah, okay. he answers the door. He's like, um, "Do you realize school hours are in session, sir?" I tell him, "No, I do not. I don't realize." Uh, Dude, would you even know what school? Is? That's what I was gonna say. I, I I didn't realize. I do know what school is because I've kind of been to like um, the um, the classes and stuff like that for spellcasters whenever we were in somewhere but I forgot so I would understand what a school is but no I don't know what school hours are <laughs> um, he kind of looks you up and down he doesn't give you a strange look though and, um, what can I help you with um, now you can start to hear children in the background who's this who's here let's see you can hear him whispering now let me is was he was Grawl friends with him, or was Grawl yeah, friends? Grawl's with friends with the guy you're talking. Okay, about. right. So I'm going to say uh, our mutual friend, uh, Professor Grawl, actually sent me word that I may need to speak with you about some things that I'm uh, trying to find out. You may have some information for me. Hmm. So in your or you're like, well, Professor Grawl, I sent to bring her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll roll some. I'll roll some. Uh, <laughs> Intimidations. <laughs> Roll the etiquette for me. <laughs> no, but uh, he uh, he kind of looks you up and down, and uh, you hear him turn to his right. He says, "Quiet!" And you hear all these little kids be quiet real quick. Um, he tells you, um, "Come back this evening." Okay. He's like, um, seven after dinner is over." Okay. And he, wham, he slams the door. Shocking a little bit, but uh, sure, I will come back at around 7 o'clock. So, um, you got a couple hours to kill. We can either speed this up, or you can travel the town. Um, basically what I'm going to do is walk around, look for anything kind of, uh, interesting to me. I mean, if there's really nothing. A graveyard. Uh, <laughs> I would like to know if there's a graveyard. There is a graveyard. Okay, I, I do, I do want to know where that's at. Um, the graveyard. Let me come back to the map here. Uh, is actually right up by the white deer. So okay. you would know you you knew you'd pass that. Um, I I take note of where that's at. Um, you notice that there is a guard out there with a man. The man's got a shovel. And the guard is looking into the hole, and the grave digger scratching his head. I'll. That's that makes me curious. I will approach. So um, they kind of look you at you very strange because you notice that is a book that you're getting here, mm -hmm. especially now that you look all regal and you walk to the graveyard. Yeah. Um, 
all the graveyards are just simple stones uh, with names, just dates. That's it. There's nothing special written on them. Um, you walk up, and uh, the guard kind of puts his hand to the old man. Be quiet. He's like, uh, can I help you, sir? Just curiosity brings me over. I was, uh, I seen you guys looking in the hole, and your friend here looked confused I was just curious as to uh, if there's anything maybe I could help with um, he, they both kind of look at each other and giggle and uh, the grave digger he's like dressed like that you're interested in an empty grave uh, you kind of look down and there is a wooden coffin the door is busted open okay uh uh, things of life and death interest me. Um, they kind of look at each other and uh, they don't know what to say when you say that. <laughs> and um, they bigger really scratches. They kind of like a bit now. And the guards like um, I think you might need to go visit the cathedral. The cathedral. What uh. I mean, that's where places of life and death take place. Who, you know, who is the uh, summonings for a church, funerals? This is just a place of burial, sir. Like he's very put off by what you've just said. I'll, I'll ask him who, uh, uh, who the, uh, who their god is there. Desna. Desna. Okay. Um, also, um, Abadar, Aristil, Gorzra, Serenay, and Shaylin. Serenay. So there's kind of a bunch of a different pantheon. Yeah, pantheon here that's kind of worshipped. Okay. Um, and he, he goes over that, and the great digger kind of he goes, he's like, obviously nothing you would be interested in. You can find this guy. You can tell is really has no filter. Yeah, I almost appreciate that. So, um, I made my, I made my way way over there. Um, roll me a perception if if, if you're leaving. You uh, leave. Yeah, I'm gonna leave uh, okay. here in a little bit. I'm not really trying to. Uh, Ten. You don't need a lot. Remember, this is path on rules. Yeah, it's five evils. Um, you notice, okay, you're you're used to being in a graveyard, mm -hmm. you know, rectangle square, you put the coffin in. You notice um, up by the headstone, the headstone is pushed back some, and where that square would be is broken. And you're thinking it's almost like something dug its way out. Okay. That piques my interest quite a bit. Obviously. Just one of these, you just happen to notice this before you leave. Uh, actually, if I notice that, before I leave, I'll ask if there's been trouble like this before. I'll say, I'll, I'll tell them I've seen things like this before. They both really kind of step back, their eyes go real, real wide. They don't say anything. Okay. It's like you just knew something that they didn't say. Mm. <laughs> They're kind of like, got this accusing look now. Um... I'll tell them that um, foul magics can bring people back, and th this this is the type of thing that can happen. <laughs> the guard he points in you know to, off behind you. He's like, you should probably go to the cathedral. I'll head that way. <laughs> so um, you go to leave, and you hear the grave digger. He's real low. He's like. I think he knew this had been going on for a while. <laughs> and the grave robber, like, the grave robber. The hey, guard's hey, like, what did I stumble the upon? Guard, the, the guard's <laughs> like, I've never seen him in the town before. Maybe, uh, maybe he's the one to rob these graves. So you kind of got an idea that there's a little grave robbing going on. Or what they think is grave robbing. It's true. Um, are you actually going to go to the cathedral? Uh, with that set of gods I don't think I will okay 
Do you openly will or a holy symbol or a uh, Norgorber? No, not openly. I'll have it tucked in my. That would be the small armory. That's why I figured. Um, so you said you got hours to kill here. Like how a lot of clerics have like their shield all yeah, that's not even I don't have that thing secret, going on. So. Yeah. Um, I would say in town there's not a lot that might pique your interest off the top of my head. Uh, the old tower, you do know that's Thessalonian ruins. I don't know if that's anything torn or it's really looked into. Can't imagine a lot of that. Not really. So, I mean, you've got a couple hours to kill. You can, you can speed it up. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So you just kind of walk around town, get the lay of the land. Uh, like I said, you draw a lot of stares from people. Um, evening sets in. Uh, you arrive back at Academy. Knock with your hand, or you tap with the ring? Uh, I'll tap with the ring. Okay. Uh, I, I assume he's expecting me at this point, so yeah. I, I will assume that will. A uh, small blonde girl opens the door. And uh, she's like, because she all actually she sees your face, and she pops, she shuts it real quick. I uh, and you hear her, master, master. As, uh, she's as, like, right as long as I hear that, I'll yeah. wait a minute. Um. Well, sorry, he comes up the door, and he's like, um, uh, yes. So, what exactly uh, are you looking for? What did Grawl send you for? And he has shut the door and stepped outside now. Uh, let's see. Let me... It's it's not Elisari that, that wore the necklace. It was no. The, it was the person that was talking to Elisari. Yes. Um, I'll tell him, uh, Grawl and myself, we have become friends over the years, and um, he actually sent me a letter that during the... Uh, Swallowtail or Shallowtail Festival was going on here. He was here. And um, in a conversation between him, you, and uh, Gandalf Falden? Grandal. Grandal, I'm sorry. That he noticed a necklace that he was wearing and that I made me to come to you to find out a little more information about that necklace. Mm, he got a little touchy funny. He's like, uh, I'm not aware of any necklace grand old wares. Um, and he asked you, why are you so curious about this necklace? People, oh, go ahead. Are you gonna say something? No, no, no. You go right ahead. Uh, people in my town used to wear that necklace, and they gave us. Um, we thought there was only one little area of our town that wore that, and maybe I was interested in seeing if there were more people that were involved in uh, the, that certain group. Um. Are you trying? Okay, obviously you're beating around the bush without saying things that need to be said. Yeah. Um, are you wanting to roll a deception here, or persuasion? Because I'm rolling some stuff here, and he's rolling. He's rolled high. Um. Not really deception, because I'm not really lying to anybody. Like, I am trying to figure out who this person is, and. Well, I mean, you're not saying names because I've got an 18 on some uh, inside over here. So you... um, and he's kind of realizing that you're hitting around to something and not really saying it. Wait, you mean we're all like, I don't know, two or three persuasions or something like that? I see. You, if you're trying to persuade him or if you're trying to lie to him, it's up to you. 20 persuasion. Okay, um... It's higher than what he's got. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say I'll even I'll even take maybe ten gold pieces out and just kind of. Right. I don't know. Okay, I didn't know if that you he could go. He's not like no. Yeah. Okay. Um, he tells you I don't know of any necklace, grandol wears. He tells you um he comes in from Agmar about every two months, mm -hmm. and um, we trade. 
he um, he gets interested in odd collections I acquire things for my travels my adventures and uh, we trade he's a fellow adventurer himself swap stories um, he uh, comes in sometimes talks to the children tells them stories um, to keep them interested to uh, help quiet them down mm -hmm. fill their minds full of imagination from a life full of strife but um, as for a necklace I can't tell you anything about a necklace okay um, let's see uh, 25 no what's 17 and 8 17 and 8 is 25 okay. you're horrible man oh I'm bad I man. You are. after all these years yeah I don't know if you're bad uh, 25 on insight do I is he? Do you I, think? Do you think he's trying to lie to you? Yeah, I, I, I'm trying to see if you have, if I believe. Oh, he, he's being um, he, he's being very honest. You've mentioned Grawl, uh -huh. which is a good thing. Um, he tells you, you know, I've never noticed any necklace. Uh, I, I will. Um, I'll ask what what kind of um, things is is he interested in? What kind of things does he trade? Mm, come with me. Okay. And uh, you you. Come in uh, at the bottom of these stairs. These stairs go up. You see some kids, and they're like, and they run upstairs. And you hear them like run upstairs real quick. Okay. Um, he takes a key and he locks this door, and uh, you see him, and he produces a lot in his hand. You walk down the stairs, and uh, he tells you um, collect odd things, maps of the area, things like uh, I'm a treasure, right? He, I used to be an adventurer, and um, I trade with of my like, acquire things. Um, tells you I recently traded off a stuffed small. Uh, what are the things called? I was going to say a chimera, but no, it's not a chimera. It's like a lion thing with wings. It's got spiky tail. Oh yeah, I um. Regardless. Yeah, I know, I know what you're talking about. I cannot think of what it is. Uh, but yeah, he's recently traded one of those away. And you walk down, and uh, he goes, and all these candles light up down there. And this place is lit. And it's stuffed monsters. He's got maps, weapons, all this stuff in this massive basement underneath this school. And uh, he says, welcome to my collection. Pretty impressive. And that is impressive. I mean, he's got maps laid out. He's got maps and scrolls. He's got some mundane items that uh, would almost look like um, religious type things. Mm -hmm. uh, you've noticed a couple of them, like Serenade, which we know you have much interest in her. Uh, like I said, stuffed monsters. He's got some stuff you've never seen. And uh, he just tells you why, buy, sell, and trade. He's like, uh, this is why he's here. Is there one specific kind of thing he's always interested in, or is it just, uh... He smiles. Uh, he's like, how do you know, girl? I tell him that I, let's see, met him, it was probably about three and a half years ago, wasn't it? That, uh... You, you our, fir our first adventure was like six or seven months or something like yeah, that. So, yeah, so, yeah, you've been about three years ago, about two and a half. Something um, there. I... Well, I, I, I figured out that I had power inside me I didn't know I had. You see him raise an eyebrow? Um, like, really? I will tell him that Grawl actually kind of helped me on a path to figure out uh, what fuels me and my power. Um, he's helped me answer questions about things that I've had in my past uh, I mean he does what he does he's a teacher and, uh, while you're talking uh, he's went over to a cabinet he's pouring some brandy and oh I'll take it um, he's like uh, please uh, do you care to elaborate on this power because um, as I've said I meant to trade yeah and you 
have said something that has piqued my interest, and I have something that will probably might help you. Okay. Uh, I'll basically tell the story um, of me. I'm not really quiet about me coming, like, trying to figure out who I am and stuff like that. I will leave out the fact that Grawl helped me murder a halfling and a paladin. Okay. Uh, roll me a little deception. Okay. Because you are leaving out stuff. Okay. And he does know Grawl. And for all you know, Grawl might have already told him all this stuff. He, he may. Oh, that wasn't great, but uh, 15. Okay. <laughs> um, I need to roll higher, so. He, uh, he's like, so, um, kind of looks at you over in, um, practice the dark arms. It's Grawl. That's that, what I was about to say, as Grawl does, so do I. Uh, he's like, uh, he's like, I would imagine if Grawl had took such interest in a person, it had to do with something. Um, can he ask? And he does this to his face. It's the side that you're burned on. Yeah. Um, I actually woke up like this. Um, then I will, uh, that, that's, that's, that's the one I woke up with. Yeah. And then I'll take off my glove and I'll say, this happened throughout my adventures. Um, let's see, what is it? My arm and, and, your legs. and my leg. I think it's all on the right side, isn't it? I think it's switched out. I've got a roll real bad somewhere. Your uh, face, mm -hmm. your right leg, your left arm. Okay. Okay, yeah, then I'll show him that and I'll show him my leg. And uh, uh, he says, Fireball? No. Tra no. I tell him as he a... Has. Dragon? No. I'll tell him as a... He I, gotta fix it. Me either. I, I learn more and more about myself. Um, as I unlock different things in my past. Uh, you can tell that he has no clue about any of this as you're telling him. Um, like you, you realize that Grawl has not spoken to him about this. Um... And I'm really wondering if I can. I want to tell him the shit that's going on. You got time. Yeah, I mean, it's I'm, completely up to you. I've just I've never been open with anybody but Grawl. Well, Bar Barlas knows your story. Yeah. So does Garrett. I don't know. Would you, Would you say you've told Garuza? Because outside of that, no one really. Yeah, knows. I, I I probably have told Garuza. Just. I'm not. I'm. I'm sure she wouldn't just. She's just kind of. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Here's the thing. I'm gonna take a chance. Okay. This may fuck me, but oh well. That's the thing. That's the game. He's friends with Grawl. He knows Grawl's basically a necromancer. Mm -hmm. Um, he's an old adventurer. He knows shit's got to get done somehow. Mm -hmm. Um. I'm gonna tell him about these pieces of me that are walking around that I really want to find. So you start telling the story and you finish about half a bottle of this brandy and he is amazed by what you're telling him. He is very fascinated. I'll tell him that whenever I've taken the halfling and I and I found the dwarf, I didn't kill the dwarf, that I gained power, but with that, these scars are showing up on me. Hmm. Yeah. I need to remind myself to um, scold Grawl next time I see him. Um, I understand why he would keep such a thing from me. He's like, but um, I figured being the good friend that he is, he would trust me. He's like, um, that may have been... So do you tell him everything like the wee who whisper woes, the whole cult? And no, all that no, stuff? I don't. I, I don't tell him because I'm trying to. I tell him I know about the cult. Mm -hmm. I don't tell him I was ever in the cult. He doesn't act like he knows it's cult, dude. Okay. So. Um. I, I'll, I'll tell him that Grawl was probably just um, respecting me whenever he didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. Um.
So keep that in mind if you, yeah, <laughs> if yeah, you get yeah. aggravated with him. And so. It's like, no, no, I, I understand. It's, it was just joking. He's like, but you're a... I'm an oddity. He's like, he, he, he kind of waves his hand around the fit. <laughs> yeah. Um, he's like, well, with such a interesting story, he's, uh, I wish that what I'm offering was worth more value to you. He's like, uh, but there is one thing that he is interested here, and none of it is here. Okay. Um, he tells you it's upstairs. Um, he tells you, uh, it's like, um, shall return. Yeah, he leaves. Um, well, he's going to offer for another. Another glass. Go right ahead. He, uh, roll me a perception. 20. Hey, not bad. You, uh, you can hear right outside the door. That motherfucker had no bounce. You it, it just, yeah. Bam. <laughs> he, uh, did you put that mark away? <laughs> no, I've done that, and that was to this one. I don't ever use it because it rolls mainly 17s. Oh, well, it's a good thing that's not like a charcoal color. It's black, so now I know the watch for the dead. Yeah, oh, I, I don't ever use it. It, it rolls shitty. See? Exactly. It always well, rolls okay. shitty. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, you hear this boy, this young boy up there with um, the teacher. He's like, but I don't want to go down there. He's like, the sand point devil's down there. He, you hear, he's like, there's no such thing as a sand point devil. And uh, he was like, it's like, fine, sit there. And he, come, he opens the door and he waves you up. I'll come up. And um, it's like, the child will not cooperate. Um, yeah, he tells you child will not cooperate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so he's interested in, uh, he's, he, has, he has an interest in a, in a child. Uh, yeah, he is interested in this child. I'll, as we're walking, I'll say, is this something like, is he wanting to adopt or is this... Um, he tells you um, he speaks with the boy every time he's here. Really? Just mm -hmm. he specifically speaks with this one by itself. Yes, he's um, he's a, he he he's a bit of a loner. He's very strange, and for all I know, maybe Grendel has riches and he needs somebody to come into it at some age. Maybe he's trying to get to know this child. Yeah. As I said, he speaks to the children. And then one specific child. And then the, and this specific child took his interest. And um, he, he, he's a bit of a loner. He doesn't talk a lot. He's very strange. You know, the kids like him. Um, he does, all he does is good luck. You walk in and this kid, uh, he's got brown hair and big green eyes. And he just looks at you. And uh, he does. Uh, um, the teacher tells him, uh, Errol. Please be respectful to Mr. Tornhart. What was this kid's name? Errol. E R E L L. Okay. And uh, he shuts the door, and you hear it lock. Oh God! You're in, you're in you're in his office. Okay. Um, and you you're sitting there with this child, and I'm assuming you've probably never dealt with the child. I, that's exactly what I say. I don't know how to deal with this. And this kid is just why I look at him like he is terrified, like he is starting to sweat as he's looking at you. All right, listen, I'm just going to, before I do anything, I'm going to roll you a couple of um, persuasions, or is that is that what it would be? Yeah, yeah, I'd be in the realm of persuasion. Just to calm this kid a tad? Uh, not great. Uh, 11 and uh, 20. So you're like, how you doing, boy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello, little boy. <laughs> um, the first one you failed on, and it kind of just rolls into one, and it was like, Sandpoint Devil is real, and he's just looking at you, and he's just like terrified. Uh, you noticed he has wet himself. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm like, I'm nothing to be afraid of. He doesn't understand that. This is a twelve year old child. Uh, all right. Here's what I'll do. Roll me perception. Okay. 14. Um, you notice when you're talk when this kid is terrified and he wets himself, 
he reaches in his tunic, he pulls out this necklace made of metal and bone. Something I'm very used to seeing. That you've been used to seeing, and he's like holding on to it for dear life. I'll um, I'll say, hey, we have uh, matching those because I, I keep mine on me. Uh, he does. Do you show it to him? Yeah, I'll I'll reach in my my bag and, and then I'll show him. You see this kid's demeanor completely change. And he's kind of embarrassed. He's now he's peed on himself. He's so scared. He says, uh, "Did Crandall give you that too?" I'll say, uh, no. I got mine from um, somebody I know in my hometown. Uh, Roth. Yeah. Um, he tells you, uh, so, 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 there's, so there's more of us? Yeah. I'll say, um, I'm actually looking for uh, Grandel. Do you, and, and um, your, I guess he's a teacher? The Ilisari? Yeah. Ilisari, yeah. Uh, he's a teacher. I'll say, does has a, an, uh, Mr. Ilisari told me that he speaks with you quite a bit. He's taking kind of an interest on you, though, to you. Uh, yeah, he, 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 he's my only friend. Is he? Mm-hmm. I, I would like to change that. Would, um, I'm, I like making new friends. And especially if we've got these, right? Well, Randall tells me this means we're family. So are we family? Um, yes. <laughs> so and he, he smiles real big, and uh, he's like, "So, so how how do you how do you know Grandel? How do you slay monsters with him? Not with him, but I do slay monsters." And his eyes get real big. Uh, before I go on, I'll actually tell him a little story about the troll that we fought and stuff like that. Like, I'll kind of try to pique his interest with a, a monster tale. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, roll me another perception. Ooh, that's really good. That's a lot better. 25. You can hear that there's somebody outside the door. Okay. Um, I'll tell him, I'll say, to answer your question, I don't know, uh, Grandel. But I'm trying to find him to get to know him. That's the reason I, uh, like I said, I, I was told that he takes quite an interest in you and likes to tell you secrets and likes to tell you stories and things like that. And m- maybe you know where he might be. Um, Magnamar, he's like, I'll be living there soon. So he's coming back to get you? Yeah, I'm going with him. He, he, he's taking me away from him. Um... How did, uh, how did, how was he able to pick up such a special little guy? So, uh, he kind of looks at him and he's like, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I forgot what it's, let's see. He, 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 he tells me I have, have good taste in girls. He said, well, Lily's very pretty. <laughs> uh, Tell tells me one day when I grow up here. He will teach me how to have, you know, a girl like Lily. Is I guess Lily's one of the little girls in the. Yeah, you're gonna ask. Yeah, I will. I'll say is the little, yeah. Lily one of the little girls. Yeah, yeah. She 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 doesn't live here, but she has a family. Oh, she got she was she got put it with a family. No, no. She her family lives here. Oh, okay, okay. In you the, know, he's kind of like upset about that. In the in the town. Mm-hmm. They live yeah, in the they, town. They, they live here. Uh, I'm really interested to see if this kid has any innate magic or anything like that. I'll ask, I'll say, uh, does, uh, Grandel ever, uh, show you any spells or anything like that? Like magic tricks? No, no, but he says I have great potential to do so. Or, or do you know any magic tricks you could show me? I'm very interested in things like that. No? Okay. No. No. He's like, uh, so I got to know magic. He's like, do you, you see him like he kind of looks around? You see him get into his little boot and he pulls out the stack. He's like, he gave me this to protect myself from boys. I'll say, keep that close. I'll, um, I'll uh, pat my sword. He puts it back in his 
of that my sword, and I'll say, that's the reason I keep that with me. Is you got to watch out for them bullies. That's what, that's what he told me. Um, I actually want to cast a spell. Okay. You know how with me, whenever Garrett cast Detect Undead and I pinged, mm -hmm. I want to cast Detect Undead. And see if he pings? And see if he pings. He has a small, faint necro. So he's, he's kind of like I was. Kind of like Garrett was. Garrett, yeah. He, there's a small bit about him. Okay. And I'll... I'm sure he's seen me kind of do some weird things and say some stuff. And hmm. I'll say... I'll say, he's right. You've got something very special in you. He smiles and he's like... He tells me I had lots of potential. Uh... Did, did he say when he's coming back to get you? Um, he like, I'm counting down the days. He should be here three weeks. In three weeks. He's like, and I won't ever have to deal with any of these boys or me, you know, sorry ever again. Oh, is the old sorry hard on you sometimes? He, he hard on all of us. Yeah. Well, you won't understand it right now, but discipline makes for a very good... You see, this is the lawful coming out of me. <laughs> he, he, that's what Grandel says, too. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'll tell him to keep the uh, dagger close. I'll tell you. Three weeks. And he wants to take you to live with him, huh? Mm hmm. So he's going to take me away from here. And take you to, um, what was it, Magnamar? Mm hmm. He wants Magnamar. to take you to Magnamar with him. There's a sect of Magnamar. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you had Ravenmore, which was destroyed. Yeah. Riddleport, which was you destroyed. Sand, uh, you got Magnamar. I kind of want to go to Ravenmore. I don't know. But anyways, oh yeah, standpoint, yeah. So, let's see. Wait, did you say there was a sect here in Sandpoint? I thought that's where they told you there was one. Oh, oh, you've got the letter here. So I don't know where the letter was. I'll look it up. Go ahead. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, I sit here and talk to the kid for a little bit. I can't really think of anything else to. Well, he's starting to yawn. He, yeah. He's trying to get a little tired. Yeah, he's getting tired. Well, I'll tell him, all right, bud. Well, um, I'm going to be here for a few days if you don't care. Maybe I can come visit you a few times. Would that be okay with you? Yeah. He's like, we're family. Yeah. Family has to stick together. That's what Greg always tells me. Yes, there is one apparently here at the same point as if you found out. Okay. Well, that's, that's unsettling. It's very unsettling. <laughs> so, and, uh... He goes and he knocks on the door. And, well, sorry, unlocks it. Uh, boy smiles and he waves at you. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. I say, I'm. I want to come back and visit with you a few times. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Was he respectful to you? I say very. And uh, he pats him on the head. You know, run upstairs, Errol. Go to bed. Um. I'll tell Ill sorry, thank you for his time. Mm -hmm. uh, like I manage you will uh, be seeing young Errol again. I, I I would like to. Uh, I'll be here for about three days. I wouldn't mind to stop by. Well, oh, I I sure he did tell you that he will be gone. That's what that's what he said. Um, I say I, I hate to I hate to hear that. I I felt. I don't know, I felt an instant connection with the boy. Tells you, um, there are no promises here. I mean, he could just find somebody else to take him one day, even though he really likes Grandel. Yeah, I'm just saying. Um, he, you could see him kind of give you, it's like a wink and a nod. Like, yeah, hey, oh, I, I understand, yeah, yeah. I, I'll tell him, I, I'll say, uh, you, you realize after your story, you've got this guy in your pocket. You yeah. Know? I'll tell him I'm here for 
after Tay, I'm here for a couple more days. I want to continue to visit with him. Um, I'll tell him if I would be very interested in taking him with me back back to my home and trying to give him a life there. Mm, we we could probably arrange that. Okay. I'll uh, I'll ask what kind of payments do you accept as uh, uh, fees and things like that. Uh, Check, money order, <laughs> money order, PayPal. <laughs> yeah, um, GoFundMe, I'll Kickstarter. Ask, I'll ask him. I mean, I'll tell him. I, I I threw my damn paper away for, and I don't I don't remember how much gold I had. It's all right. You ha- you can easily dot this kid with all the gold that you'd have in order for it. Okay. Or. Maybe trade. Well, that's what I was going to say. In trade. That's what I was going to say. Is there anything that maybe uh, I could do for him while I'm here when we can work out a trade? Um, he tells you, um, I will make you a deal. Okay. Eventually, I'm sure, within your travels based by your story, you will find something that you would probably might realize that I would be interested in. And uh, if not, many things equal the interest of one. Mm-hmm. And as his time, you know, he's walking with you too. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, keep that in mind. I will. And he extends his hand. I'll shake it. I'll, uh, I keep, now I'm going to keep Grawl and him as kind of my go-to cool. guys right now, outside of town. Uh, I, I try to, I try to make connections where I go. And, uh, he asks, go, uh, where are you staying here? Right now I'm staying at the, uh, White Deer. Okay. Um, he says, uh, if you need anything, but you know, okay. and I will keep eyes and ears out. Okay. Um, I'll show him the necklace. Mm-hmm. If you see that, let me know. You're gonna tell him Errol wears one of those? No, I won't tell him the boy wears one. I'm gonna tell him that that that's okay. the necklace that um, I was looking for on uh, Grandel. Okay. And um, he'll keep that in mind. And uh, he'll say, you know, he'll thank you for such an interesting tale. Now, uh, for he'll thank you for trusting, yeah, or anything. We'll see if that bites me in the we'll ass see later. That bites you in the ass. <laughs> it has before. It has, and I'm, I'm very, and that's the reason I've been very iffy to tell anybody anything about me. So, so well, yeah, I would say that's been fruitful here. Yeah. Uh, you've gained a, a possible ally. Yeah, and that's and, what I like. I like the connections. And you found this small child. Yeah, I'm very interested in him. So, well, we'll see how that goes.